The footage unfolding in front of you here in vivid DOS-era EGA graphics is captured from what I consider the most subversive video game ever made. The Oregon Trail is an oddity, an educational game that's also fun. It's designed to be played by a group of children on one computer and rewards experimentation with extraordinary candor. The ability to kill your classmates with horrific diseases, gun down endangered animals with reckless abandon, and leave a secret legacy of profanity for generations of other third graders to discover. The Oregon Trail taught me a ton about economics, AI, resource management, history, and trolling my friends when I was a child. But these teachings paled before its greatest lesson. Life is not fair. In the Oregon Trail, you can do everything right, and you can still fail. Play the game over and over, and you learn to exploit the design quirks. You learn how many supplies to gather, how to hunt, the value of preparation. But no matter how perfectly you plan and how skillfully you play, the Oregon Trail will sometimes quite simply screw you over. Rattlesnake bites and dysentery don't care how thoroughly you prepare. Prudently save enough cash to buy a safe ferry ride across a river, and the moorings might still break and sweep you away into the tide, wrecking your hopes. There's a school of thought I encounter too often, that people are somehow individually responsible for what happens to them. That at some economic or spiritual level, their defects and choices are governed by mathematical laws of perfect fairness. The Oregon Trail laughs at such foolishness. It teaches kids that looking into the future only allows you to see so far, that we can try hard and do good and still lose. It's a brutal, harsh lesson for a six-year-old to learn through an educational game, but it's a good one because it teaches us about reality and compassion. I wish some adults could learn it. A second lesson superbly taught by video games comes from Gone Home, which teaches us how to walk in someone else's shoes. I attended a small Christian liberal arts college and my best friend there was gay. I met him at a time when he was struggling mightily to understand his sexuality. We'd both grown up in a church tradition that taught that while attraction to a person of the same sex was not a sin, acting on that attraction and forming a romantic same-sex relationship was. At the time, I thought of myself as illuminated, progressive, tolerant, and encouraging. I thought I could help him work through his realization and hold on to his faith. And through what I thought of as an act of love and friendship, change him into what I thought he should be. But in the end, I didn't change my friend. He changed me. His actions and the sincerity of his conviction and the testimony of his spiritual faith all combined to challenge my presuppositions. His witness, along with what I believe to have been the work of a supernatural reality in my heart, opened my mind. I realized that I was the one who needed teaching. And this memory kept coming back to me when I played Gone Home. We sing songs about walking in someone else's shoes, but until games came along, we couldn't really do it. Through video games, we can quite literally now see through another person's eyes, live out their life, experience a story unfolding through their point of view. Through their experiences, we can come to love the people they love, and we can come to understand that the way we see things is hardly the sum of experiences in a vast world. Games can make us more empathetic. A third lesson I learned from games, I learned from To the Moon. I learned that time travel is possible. I still remember my dad telling me that looking across the vast sky at the light from distant stars was the only way we knew to travel through time. But after he taught me that, video games came along and changed things. In a video game, we can travel through time. We can see a version of what might have been. We can experience an imagined outcome happening partially under our control, but also at the whim of a creator operating behind a curtain. The art of a video game developer blurs the boundaries of temporal reality. We dream of changing the past, but in a simulation, we can actually do it. C.S. Lewis once wrote, that no one has ever told what would have happened. But in a game, we can get a pretty good idea. In the play within a play that comprises to the moon, we can prevent accidents and mishaps, alter the choices we made that now haunt us, save the people we love. We can wipe the slate clean and make a better life. 
And we learn that if we can change something in that illusion, that maybe we can find ways to change things in reality too. We might not be able to reach into our past and do it, but we can dream of a better future. We can dream. And that's the lesson games taught me more than anything else, to dream for the sake of dreaming. And that's where we're going next on Hop, Blip, and a Jump, for chance to dream.